So what I want to talk about today. Oh, obrigado. One love. Love you more. What I want to talk about uh, today is uh, African prints. I'm, I'm interested in like there's a there's a very uh, interesting conversation to be had uh, about the African prints and uh, where they come from. So when I say African prints, I mean uh, yeah everything that we when we look at them we we. We say, oh, those, that's African prints. That's wax all on there. And, uh, and a lot of Africans don't realize that the African prints have nothing African in their history. It became African prints uh, after. But everything starts uh, in uh, what we call Indonesia which back in the days was uh, the Dutch West Indies. Back when every European country had a, had a colony somewhere in India, in, 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 in Asia, in Africa, in even the US. I mean, they were in the conquest of the world. Uh, hello, Mickey. How are you? And so back then, Indonesia was called the Dutch West Indies, and it belonged to the kingdom of Holland, Dutch, and uh, Dutchland. See, Dutchland, uh, Holland, and so the locals uh, in, in the Indone Indonesian had a technique to use wax. To, and to do some prints on textile called batik. And actually, the, 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 the Dutch army were, were comprised of uh, Dutch people and slaves from Africa. And they actually were using a lot of these, uh, these, these, these army to protect their different colonies. And that's how the Indonesian textile start traveling from the shores of, uh, of Indonesia and the, the Dutch were trying to to sell what they had there in around the world right and uh, in Europe this they, 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 they were trying to, to to create their own version of of this batik batik style and uh, because the batik in uh, in uh, in Indonesia had a better quality than the one in Europe. In Europe, like they were trying to copy it, like they, they saw it, it was working. They was they were selling it around, but they would have to go to Indonesia by boat and retrieve everything to Holland so they could sell in Europe, like they were doing with uh, like the England the English were doing with tea, uh, the French were doing with with, with gold, etc., etc. And uh, so instead of traveling all the way to Indonesia and coming back to, to, to Dutchland to, to sell for the rest of the Euro European market, the batik clothing, they started trying to create cheap versions, cheap industrial versions of the, the, this cloth. And at a point, uh, Somebody in Belgium invented a printer, and Belgium is part of Benelux, which is Luxembourg, Belgium, and Holland. And somebody in Belgium invented a printer where you could recreate those those uh, those those designs, but in an industrial way. So you could do way more than the artisanal things out there. So all of a sudden, they started flooding the market with fake batik. And this is when um, uh, it start creating uh, some imperfections on, in, uh, on, on that. And people start loving it, actually. But they could not sell it in, in Europe because people were like, yeah, that, that's not good quality. So what they did, because they also had uh, colonies in West Africa, they start t taking the bad, the bad batch, the bad batch of their uh, of their 
batik copies and they start selling this en masse in West Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, these places. And they were like, yeah, yeah, let, let us let them have the bad quality. But when it arrived there, it became so popular that they were like, oh shit, we have a thing here. So they started selling those cloth to uh, the African market and the Dutch wax was born. So the Dutch wax was a bad version with crack, crackled and then, but everybody thought that, oh my God, oh, these effects is amazing. The, 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 bees, the, the wax that you use to, to have the ink uh, stay under the, between the wax and the, and the cloth, because it, 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 the, 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 the quality of what they were doing was not good. It created some crackles and, but everybody in Af Africa loved it. They thought it was part of the style and the, the Dutch wax exploded. So um, a lot of women start using it in Africa as, as clothing and et cetera, et cetera. And then there was a company. <sighs> Let me tell you about this company. So there was a company called, there was a company uh, created, I mean, founded by a man called Peter Fent Fentener Van Vlissigen. And he started his company called the Van Vlissigen and Co. And they start flooding the African market with all these, these cloth. And um, they, they start flooding the African market with, 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 with their, they had, they really develop a technique and they start creating in-house patterns of, of copies of batik and stuff and they start flooding the African market with in, in, in West Africa and also Central Africa with the Vlissigen and Co. Uh, cloth and these became so 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 popular they changed the name of their company to Vlisco and this is so amazing that Vlisco is synonym of African prints, Ankara, uh, African prints, watch, wax, royal Dutch design, etc. And a lot of Africans, they think it is African stuff, but actually everything is produced in Holland, in, 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 uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, everything is designed there. Most of the, des the design that are super iconic, like uh, dashiki and all these, everything, the names, everything was invented in Europe, in the Netherlands. And uh, not by Africans, <laughs> but pure. <laughs> and it is so interesting that uh, it really got adopted by uh it really got adopted by by the african culture and it became synon synonym of african fashion but then we are in a in a complete contradiction because whenever the kardashians start wearing some african prints or whatever we all there yelling ah cultural appropriation but once you know the story <laughs> in that uh, Wait, it's not even ours, even this. But like when I, you know, uh, so oh, everything that I'm telling you happened in the, the years, uh, in the, eight, the 19th century. So we're talking about uh, the, the 1800s and, 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 and 37, and, 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 uh, right? And, Ever since these times, Africans have been celebrating and championing these these brand, and uh, I have nothing against it because I'm a I'm a I'm a I like 
I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a champion of of, of uh, blending cultures and and uh, yeah, I'm a champion of blending cultures and and uh, and myself. I'm a I'm a I'm one of the pillars of of, of Kizomba when and Zouk when actually uh, my culture is a Congolese culture. So and I, it's not a I'm not telling you this story to I'm not telling you this story to 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 criticize or, or to have something against that. It's just that I like us to be informed because a lot of times I see people reacting when they see uh, white people wearing uh, African cloth and they're, they're angry because they're like, ah, this is our stuff. Why are you wearing our stuff? Da 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 da. And they, or I see Americans being pro-black since the 70s wearing dashiki and they're like, ah, da 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 da. And I look at them like, if only you knew, like, like if only you knew that, yeah, uh, it became ours because we made it ours and because uh, most of these most of these uh, designs and, uh, and patterns are um, imported in Africa from the Netherlands until today. The, if you look at the designing team, let me go to their website. Um, About Vlishko. Let's see. Hey, welcome, Jean Philippe. Welcome, welcome, welcome. New subscribers, go subscribe on YouTube. People on Facebook, you have to subscribe on YouTube. It's important. Uh, so, that's very interesting because. Let me go to there about the founding of Lishko, uh, manufactured fabrics loved by African women since 1846. Wax on super wax Java continue to be made with time honored methods and materials in Helmen in the Netherlands. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. So, um, I know there's a place when you can see the designers, but I don't remember where it is. Uh, careers, wait. Uh, so I'm news about this goal. Wait, let me see. Mm, it's not here. There was a thing that I saw. I was like, wow. Wait, Dashiki Inventor. Let me see. Who invented the Dashiki? Where did the sheepy come from? Oh, I forgot. Never mind. Anyway, just to tell you that uh, it's a it's a it's a cute story uh, to remind you of how how actually in this world uh, I don't I don't I don't think that uh, African prints all of a sudden should not be called African prints. Even if, yeah, it is actually false. But I mean, there there are some original African prints like like Kente and uh, the South African ones and, and the companies that came afterwards in Ghana. But 
a lot of them have been the one there was there were there were there were two companies in ghana and in uh avery coast that also started uh designing i'm sorry i forgot the names uh they started also designing um wax uh and they started having their own factories in africa and it was african made textile but after a point they they start struggling and they both of them got bought by vlishko too so it's not a multinational company and uh i mean they don't they don't hide the fact that it is a it is a dutch company because the the the, the, the wax hollandaise super watch super wax dutch is it's there it's, it's it's in the name and it's actually a synonym of quality for us but it's just that a lot of people and if me even myself before before two or three years ago i had no idea actually that we were talking about um our whole our whole textile imagery everything is created and invented in europe in in dutchland so it is very interesting and, and uh, a lot of a lot of and it, and this is a story about a lot of different either uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of things that we believe are from somewhere most of the times are from somewhere else and if you think about all these designs and if you look in Google for batik you will realize that yeah everything has been stolen from actually indonesia so it's not it's not dutch it's indonesia fabric that traveled around the world and it's the same thing for music it's the same thing for zook it's the same thing for kizomba it's the same thing for reggaeton reggaeton is not it's not it's not a puerto rican genre it's from it's from it, it's a it's just spanish dancehall it's a, it, everything comes from a song called uh, Dembo from Shabba Ranks, but that's going to be for another episode where I will have another story to tell to uh, to enlighten some minds. Uh, but it's the same thing. As, did, did Kizomba come from Angola? Just the name. Uh, that music traveled from all around the world be, be, before we say Kizomba for everything. You have you have Kompa, you have Cadence, you have Meringue, you have Zouk, you have a lot of different genres that with the time with the name with the, the 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 traveling of the people with the internet people sometimes they just don't know the history of things and it's super interesting so at least now you know next time you next time you see uh, a dutch woman wearing african prints don't come and say oh that's our stuff <laughs> <laughs>